Tanya. I'm from Indiana. My story began in 1981, just three short months before my high school graduation, I found out I was pregnant. I had to graduate at all costs, and most importantly, my parents could never find out. So my boyfriend, who was several, several years older than I, took me to Indianapolis to have an abortion. Most of what happened at the clinic that day is a blur, except that I was completely focused on what I knew had to be done. Like I was running in a grueling race, I knew I had to keep going no matter what. No matter what I felt, what my doubts were, my fears, I had to endure just to receive that prize of secrecy. No one could ever know about my mistake, and then life could continue like nothing had happened. My secret became my greatest source of turmoil, and unable to talk to anyone about my feelings, what began as guilt and shame turned to loneliness and despair. Feelings of unworthiness plagued me for many years. These feelings walked me through a divorce, a time of drug and alcohol use, a physically abusive relationship, and as the years went by, I developed a loathing or an anger towards myself for everything that I had done and all the hurt that I caused to my family and my loved ones. In 1980, I found some hope when I decided to follow Jesus and I confessed my sin of abortion specifically and knew that it meant that I was forgiven. But yet I found it difficult to walk in that forgiveness as I repented regularly for that secret and continued to hold it so tightly. The Lord knew what he was doing when he led me to begin volunteering at a local pregnancy resource center. Before long I was on staff and then we began training for an abortion recovery program called Forgiven and Set Free. The abortion recovery study made me look right into the eyes of my anger and my feelings of unworthiness. I realized for the first time that I was not just forgiven for my abortion, but for the guilt that I had struggled with. And in memory of my Benjamin James, that's why I'm silent no more. Woo!